Hey guys, welcome to part four of the chronicling the build of the studio scale X-Wing, in this case Red 5. Um, last we spoke, I was working on the inside of the wings. Since then, I have finished the outside of the wings, almost, and I have done a fair amount of work on the fuselage. Uh, so from here on out, it's going to jump around a little bit. Um, I... The, the two things I need to do next is uh, finish off the uh, laser cannon assemblies, which will be addressed. And uh, there is an interesting detail on the back of the wing, like the box that the engines sit on, uh, that uh, I hadn't really ever addressed or paid that close attention to uh, in regards to Red 5. Uh, but it's actually very intriguing, and I'll get to that in a second. So. Uh, what I have gotten to as a state is this, uh, and it of course is not put together, but doesn't that look just fucking sexy? Um, I just love, love, love this design. Uh, and what I've done, this guy is separate and goes on later, uh, and the fuselage of course is just sort of sitting here at the moment. So uh, let me break it down a little bit. What I have done is finished all of the chipping and re-scribing detail on the fuselage and the outside of the wings. So this is Red 5's wings. Uh, you're looking at the upper uh, right and left wing. That is the lower. And that is accurate chip detail. Uh, it is point, uh, 0.01 styrene. Uh, I said 020 earlier. And that's what's on the inside, but I don't think that's correct. I think it's uh, 010. Uh, and comparing it to a uh, casting of a pyro half uh, pretty much confirms that. So um, I've got the mounts for the laser cannons. I'll talk about that more next time. Um, and the area right here is what I'm now going to address. On... Pyros, they're blank. On Heroes, at least I think Red 3, there's like a ribbing detail with styrene uh, strip or T rod. I don't think there was any real consistency, but you know, they were like, there's an attempt to greeble this up. Um, on Red 5, and I'll throw up a photo, it's pencil lines that makes it look like panel lines. So I think in the spirit of the marching orders for this is make it a little nicer than the filming prop. Makes it inaccurate to the studio scale model, but I'm fine with that. Um, I think I'm going to either scribe some lines or I think adding actual panels with thin styrene chip might be the way to go. Uh, I think that would be the coolest. It would be in the spirit of what I'm looking at as pencil lines. They, there was even a, a, a suggestion of the nibble you know for like an armor plating and that's just one little detail you can add to something like this that's really going to push it over the edge and uh, when somebody's looking at it in person or is zooming in on a photo uh, they get rewarded so wings are so close to being done uh you know like all the intakes are done all the exterior chip it's great so that's done Fuselage. Fuselage. Um, this, as I said before, is a personal project. It is not a kit. Uh, I, uh, again, apologize um, to anybody that wants one of these particular things, but, uh, you know, considerable money would have to be thrown at my friends to release the files um, to pay for them for their time. There are two original pieces here. Um, this is a literal casting of a hero X-Wing top from 1976. As you can see, it is warped, it is bowed, but it gives incredible information to people uh, who are interested in this kind of stuff. There are scribe lines. They're, they are shallow, but they're there. They're even under the droid strip, which is a pretty cool discovery. Uh, this is about four millimeter thick resin. Uh, this particular formulation of resin wasn't what all of them were cast in. And you have to remember, we're talking 1976, they're experimenting with the materials, 
They're trying to figure out what would be fastest, maybe cheapest, uh, most effective for use. Um, and only five heroes were done in this way, where the top is a resin casting and the bottom is a vacuum formed piece of styrene over a buck. What that means is that these panel lines probably don't move around too much, right? But they're very faint. So when the builder, and again, it wasn't the same guy necessarily working on every single one of them. So you're gonna see different techniques creep in. Uh, when the builder rescribed or deepened the scribe lines on the panels, things might've moved or shifted. Um, and when they hollowed out, hogged out, however you wanna put it, the windows on these castings, there is a scribe for this window. So that's pretty easy. But on the sides, it's a little more nebulous. And at the back window, it's blank, which to me explains why some of these back windows on the heroes, if you compare each, each of them, uh, you know, moves around a little bit. Uh, not as wide, not as tall, uh, maybe wider or taller. Uh, and uh, that kind of stuff, I just, I, I live for that. Uh, and it's really great to see the reinforcements on the inside and the little blocks for where their solution for an armature with the acrylic uh, sort of plug that the metal went through, you know, made it up with and rode. Um, this also means that the nose was completely bespoke for every single X-Wing uh, that was a hero. So this moved around a little bit, depending on where they cut it, depending on where it was sanded. And even the nose cone itself would move a little bit, depending on how the human hand held it against the belt sander to make it flat or whatever. Uh, minutia, stupid, perhaps, love it. Um, so, only a couple heroes made in the grand scheme of things. The majority of the X-Wings seem to be, that, that were manufactured, seem to be pyros because, you know, they were blowing them up, they were testing. Uh, a whole wave of pyros were made very lovingly and then I don't think survived to the screen because they just didn't detonate correctly uh, or the way they wanted it to. Uh, when the pyro master pattern was made, which I restored uh, for Gus, uh, a hero essentially casting and a vacuum-formed bottom was brought together by Dave Jones, who recently passed and is incredibly missed, and was such an incredible amount of information. Uh, Dave was such an incredibly warm and uh, giving person with information and stories, and we lost uh, a, a wonderful human being and a source of info. Uh, so I think it's really vital that uh, you talk to these guys if you can. <laughs> and just listen to what they have to say because it's gonna disappear if we don't uh, hold on to it or chronicle it. And this is part of what drives me. Um, I want to know that this info gets passed down uh, if people care, uh, you know. So anyway, uh, so Dave and possibly probably others took these parts, made Dave made a, a X-wing pattern again, essentially for the pyro. Where he put the nose was going to be different from everybody else. I should also mention <laughs> the bottoms of these X-Wings, because it's vacuum formed, every scribe line is going to be completely different on the hero because they were starting from scratch. And yes, an attempt was made to make them consistent, but, you know, shit moved around a little bit. Uh, and sometimes things were unique, especially on blue or one slash red two. Uh, the little area where the Proton, ooh, almost said photon, torpedoes are uh, located on the heroes, moves around quite a bit. On the pyro, it's locked down because, you know, Dave patterned it once and then they were cast. So, uh, when the bottom was mated to the top, uh, it, it was slightly higher up than, say, Red 5 or Red 3, which made the X-Wing a little thinner. Uh, also, it was cut this way vertically, thinking that the weight of the wings, which were permanently affixed, would help pull the hull apart when detonated. So we lost thickness from the blade, you know, the kerf of the blade, the thick, the actual little, like literal thickness of the blade meant that the bodies were all a little narrower. And then over the years, they were cast and cast and cast and cast uh, off of each other. And so every generational shrinkage made them stumpier and thinner. And so that's how 
20, 30 years later, we ended up with like weird, thin, smaller X-Wings. So this, whew, this is like ground zero. So I've been talking about the pyro. Here is a pyro half. So this is a casting from the master pattern. This is from production. Again, you can see Dave made a permanent block for the wings. I have an actual pyro wing with briefer white on it. Holy cow. Um, you know, these were, these were glued. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's do this correctly. Uh, glued down, you know, and uh, the width uh, was a, a sort of a bigger splay because of just the angle. Um, again, as I said, this is now locked into position. This is now locked into position and the way it, it sort of transitions is going to be different than the handmade ones hero and if you hold them against each other i know we're doing top to bottom left to right you can see how actually i guess i should do it like that and i hold it against the desk you can see how the casting of the hero comes much further forward that way than what the pyro ended up with with nose wise so you know this was cut completely out or perhaps I've never seen a you know the, the this piece that was pushed into here uh, by itself so that could be why it sort of sat in you know into a little recess perhaps uh, no one remembers we're not sure um, but again all these little chip details now locked in with the pyro because it was part of the pattern uh, all these panel lines uh, locked in you can see that back window Dave or someone did etch you know where to cut it out so consistency was completely definitely introduced uh with the pyros but again the goal with this particular build is trying to get this thing um so let me put this down so it doesn't fall and break <laughs> Woo. let's move the pyro wing and these are made out of like biscuit these are made out of biscuit foam it's real like weird and lightweight um stuff it's pretty cool so, Red 5. This is as close as I think we're going to get, uh, you know, from photos, from the measurements, from, you know, that data. Uh, the nose is, I mean, when you start looking at the photos, it just starts feeling right. You know, that's like, that's chunky, that's fat. The way this transitions is different from all other stuff out there. Um, the bottom you know, there's details. This chip, I'm not entirely sure, was there in 76. It was there uh, after production wrapped on the original trilogy. Uh, so this this might be an addition from Empire or Jedi. I'm not sure. Um, there is brick sheet, Holgate and Reynolds brick sheet on either side. Uh, and this guy, uh, you know, is pretty much in the right spot. I am relatively confident I got this right. Uh, never can be too sure, 100%. Um, this is the plug, the starboard plug for this guy. Comes off of a Hummel. Um, and then the bottom, uh, this doesn't exist anymore. Uh, by the time Jedi was around, uh, there was a handmade replacement, which completely makes sense, because why would you hold on to a you know model mount plug? No one cares. Um, so those hide the mount points as does R2 himself um, and this is uh, ready for ready for building uh, or painting I'm going to probably paint a lot of this before I start gluing things together just for yeah, psychological ease um, the way the cockpit goes and that's gonna be a couple videos because it gets really complicated uh, the way we have it designed it sockets from below and then components from above and then the canopy seals the deal um, the way I hogged out the laser, uh, or the proton torpedo, uh, I took a drill bit, wrapped, or I took a drill bit and physically drilled, uh, and then I took a smaller aperture drill bit, wrapped it in 320, uh, sandpaper, and with my hand just really made sure that that area was hogged out. I will say that this is a little more rounded than it probably should be, but again, I, I've sort of deviated from the norm a lot, and uh, that's, that's going to be okay. The, the, the bottom, 
tapers to a very thin point, mimicking the pulled, uh, right, the roof, mimicking the pulled um, styrene from the vacuum form. So that is a cool sort of nod to its hero ness. So yeah, that's uh, that's where I am at the moment. Like I said, I'm gonna add detail to the back of that uh, spot on the wings and finish up the laser cannon mounts, uh, and that will be what I talk about next. And then I'm gonna dive into uh, the cockpit and uh, you know really get that done. Uh, once the cockpit is painted and decaled and weathered and the pilot's done and it's all ready to go, uh, the rest of it's gonna be like finished paint work, joining those hulls together, hooking up all the uh, electronics, which uh, is also a whole big thing. And uh, then, uh, you know, just little final detail type stuff. So the majority of the build seems to be in the rear view mirror. I say that, and then I make shit more complicated. Um, but yeah, this is pretty exciting stuff. And uh, I hope this answered questions that people have when they build it. Um, you just need to look at your photographs uh, carefully and, and see where panel lines fall. And uh, I, I've, I messed up a couple times and had to, you know, redo it. Um, I'm leaving a score line sort of to give the illusion that this nose uh, is a piece that can come off even though it's all, you know, put together now. Um, because you can in the film even see the, that line. So I think that's in the spirit of the actual, um, you know, the, the design itself if it were real world. And I love Josh's design uh, solution for the whole nose transition. Uh, you know, making sure these seams are clean uh, is so much easier than uh, the way most of the other castings in the past that other fans have made. Um, you know, it's just a much smarter process that I think only came about because we are designing things digitally now. Uh, and not completely by hand. Um, so that really does sort of open things up to how are we gonna, you know, approach the way part breakdown happens. And in fact, initially, the parts broke down in a completely different way. Um, and it with this, you know, the old tried and true top and bottom seems to... <laughs> I'm saying a lot of uh, double entendres today. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna dive back into it and I'll have another update and I will see you guys next time.